Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Bud Light. Bud Light is going insane. And if I knew Bud Light personally, I would sit down with Bud Light's family and friends and have an intervention to try to get them onto some sort of a realistic track. I don't know what the future is going to be of this beer, but in the meantime, they continue to do things that are way outside of normal. They're continuing inappropriate sponsorship deals. It's not just Dylan Mulvaney now. They're giving away more and more free beer now through July 4th in the hopes that if they can give away enough free beer, they'll move enough volume and maybe they won't lose as much shelf space. But they are losing a lot of shelf space. They've already obviously started to lose some of it because their sales are now down worse than they were last week. Last week, their sales were off 30.3% in volume, meaning actual cans and bottles that were sold, or in their case, not sold. This week, sales are even worse. We have the revenue number. We don't have the final volume number, but it looks like it's not 30.3% this week. It looks like it's at least 32% off, which is a lot of beer. It's a big loss for them. Let's get into this story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. I'm trying to get to 25,000 subscribers. So if you can subscribe, please do subscribe. Thank you for that. After all the controversy with Dylan Mulvaney, Bud Light thought this would be a great idea. They sponsored the Toronto Pride Parade. The problem with that is it's attended by naked men with children around them. Sometimes it's their children, sometimes it's not their children. Does that sound appropriate to you? No, that's not a good sponsorship for a mainstream brand. But then again, it doesn't look like Bud Light is any longer a mainstream brand. Coming from Fox News, Bud Light sponsors Toronto Pride Parade attended by naked men and children. Videos from the event show naked men riding bicycles and waving to a crowd that included kids. Bud Light is serving as an official sponsor of the Toronto Pride Parade, where video footage shows naked men standing around and riding bicycles in clear view of children attending the event. You would think someone would be embarrassed about this, or someone would say, hey, wait a minute, this isn't good for our brand. Like, doesn't Bud Light maybe have an executive that kind of protects the brand when they're there and they see how the brand is used? And the scary thing is, yeah, they probably do have one of their people there and they're like, hey, this is what we're all about. And this is why there's so much pushback on Bud Light now is it's not that people are having a boycott. It's that who wants to be associated with this? If you're not the kind of person that wants to march naked in a pride parade or any other public place in front of children, then you're not gonna be one of the Bud Light customers. It's just working out to be that way. The footage captured by Beth Bache of the Post Millennial shows dozens of attendees riding past a large cheering crowd. The fully naked bikers, some covered in paint or tattoos, wave back at the crowd. One naked man high fives an onlooker while another pedals a recumbent bike with a gold blow-up swan adorned around his neck. A second video shows a group of naked men with hats standing in a circle amidst the crowd. Several children walk past the group of men and their families. Another clip shows a person wearing a giant penis costume that covers his entire head. The camera catches a young girl sitting in a stroller and staring toward the phallic costumed individual. Other videos show a group of naked men playing and rinsing themselves off alongside a fountain surrounded by kids. Meanwhile, a stage clearly adorned with Bud Light branding featured scantily clad dancers wearing fishnets, nipple stickers, and strange sock-like masks. The company website notes this year's sponsorship is a representative of a long-standing partnership with the Pride event. Quote, Bud Light Canada has been a proud partner of Pride Toronto for the last 10 years. This year, we're commemorating this milestone with Pride Toronto by featuring them on our can design, as well as continuing as the official beer sponsor of the festival, the beer brand's website states. So this is who they're focused on, and this is who they are selling their beer to. They could put their logos on the cans and do whatever they want. And if you want to associate with this, then this is the beer for you. If you don't want to associate with this, and a lot of us don't, it is certainly not the beer for you. And you don't want people seeing you drink a beer like this 
and thinking like, yeah, that's who you are and that's what you're all about. If that's not what you're all about, not the status symbol that you were looking for. According to the website, Bud Light Canada also provides $100,000 to various organizations that support the LGBT community across Canada and has created a range of commemorative Pride beer cans to celebrate the collaboration. Anheuser-Busch and Pride Toronto did not return Fox News Digital's request for comment. The partnership comes nearly three months after Bud Light received a massive backlash for partnering with the trans activist Dylan Mulvaney. With sales down now, worse than they've ever been before for Bud Light, the boycott, as they call it, is not going anywhere because it's not a boycott, it's a reassociation. And unless you're the kind of person that's gonna run around naked in a parade like this in front of children, you're not the kind of person I don't think that's gonna drink that kind of beer. And this is what Bud Light thinks is appropriate for their brand. This is what they want to be associated with. These videos are not the worst of their videos, but just so you understand, this is what they're doing at their parade. And this is what Bud Light is all about. And that's great. These people like Bud Light. It fits in with them and their lifestyle. And that's perfect for them. But if it's not for you, I can obviously understand that. A Bud Light will be giving away even more free beer in the United States to try to save their 4th of July sales because the sales are reported every week and they're not reported through Bud Light corporate. They're reported by independent retailers. The information is collected and then the industry analyst, Bump Williams, working with Nielsen IQ, publishes the weekly data. It's not something Bud Light can control. And because we see these numbers every week, and because especially they just keep getting worse every week, and I think that's going to continue for a while, at least most weeks, it does encourage people to stay interested in it and to see, hey, yeah, this is really working. We told them this is unacceptable. We're not buying your product anymore. And we see the results. So from Newsweek, Bud Light giving away beer for free to try to save 4th of July sales. Because even if it's free, it does two things for them. One, the sales wind up getting reported at the register, even if you don't pay anything for it. They're reporting the sale and then you're getting the credit back. So it looks like they've actually sold more beer than they did because how could you say free beer is actually sold? It's given away, it's like a sample, but they push it through the system so it's reported as a sale. It makes it look like their sales aren't as bad as they actually are. The other thing it does is it prevents Bud Light's independent distributors from having to go to these stores, pick up the expired beer, bring it all the way back to their warehouse, have the beer destroyed, then have a check cut, that stuff isn't free to do either. So getting the beer off the shelf and in a customer's hands for free is actually cheaper for them than getting it back into the distributor's warehouse and then having to pay to have it destroyed. Additionally, on the other end, on the supply end, it keeps their production line working because there are people obviously that have jobs that actually make this beer that goes into the cans, that goes onto the trucks and goes out ultimately to the stores. They're not able to produce more beer if no one's going to consume it even for free. They are really gonna have to shrink this brand and they should be just making a public announcement about that now and not wasting everybody's time and money with this, meaning consumers, store owners, distributors, they're still pushing the product out into the system where no one obviously wants the product on the level that they used to. And keeping in mind, this sales drop of what looks like around 32% in volume for this week, it's not 32% evenly across the country. It's very uneven. It's 5% in this market, 15% in that market, and that's manageable. That's not a big deal, but it's 60% or worse in Florida, 50% or more in Staten Island. That is so disruptive. So to get to that 32% average, a very high percentage of their national market is destroyed. It's not a national brand anymore. It just isn't. The rebates that they're offering are something like $15 to rebate a 15 pack of Bud Light. Whatever they can do to get people to just take the beer, take it for free, at least until sometime in the future, people are willing to pay for it. But that's not, even that is not working. Now to get you really excited about Bud Light again, they will do and try anything. There's also a $10,000 weekly giveaway they're doing. They're bringing in NFL stars. 
They're going all out and doing everything they possibly can. Every day they seem to try to come up with something else. I'm sure they have plans to try to do a few other things than just this. Anything other than apologize and anything other than an honest effort to rebrand the beer away from Dylan Mulvaney, to rebrand the beer away from the people that would want to jump into a bubble bath with Dylan Mulvaney. I'm sure there are a few people that would like to do that. Not me personally, but what Bud Light should be doing is when you think of Bud Light, it shouldn't be that you're thinking of jumping into a bathtub with Dylan Mulvaney. That is job one for them right now, yet they refuse to do it. So they brought back the Bud Knight character. The Bud Knight character existed between 2017 and 2019, was very popular. People really liked it, thought it was cool. They put this tweet out today with the Bud Knight character saying, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Good luck to them with that. Again, it, it doesn't rebrand the beer. And it, it's the kind of situation, I'm not sure if you feel this way, you could tell me in the comments below, but if you were to trust Bud Light and said, okay, you know what, cool, if they wanna do fun stuff with Bud Knight, maybe I'll get into it a little bit, I'll check it out. Um, but wouldn't you expect to find out in the future the Bud Knight is actually like he's transgender or pansexual or something like that. People are not gonna invest themselves into a brand when they don't trust the company. I don't think this is going to work, but again, they will try literally anything to try to get people interested in Bud Light again. Doesn't look like it's gonna work. It looks like they're gonna get a lot more of what they deserve. And what they deserve is for the brand to shrink down to almost nothing, for the people that want to buy it in the markets that are not 32% off, that are not 60, 70% off, then sell there and promote there and people are happy and that's fine. But it's not gonna be a mass market and especially not a number one brand anymore. They don't even have a chance. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Did you think that they would do something this crazy again, that they would sponsor something so inappropriate where there are adult people walking around without clothes on in front of children, would you think that they would do something like that after they're trying to spend all of this money and all of this energy to bring customers back? Also, do you have any interest in Bud Knight? Are you going to support the company again because you see them bringing back Bud Knight? Is there anything they could do with that character that would create any interest for you? And are you surprised to see that their sales are off worse this week than they were last week? Is that something you expected to see? And do you expect next week to be even worse than this week? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Really appreciate you guys. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.